Good morning guys, welcome to a video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter O'Neill and today I'm going to show you the stuff I bought in Sally Car Boot Sale yesterday. Before I start I want to give a shout out to a beautiful lady, um, Rebecca. She came and said hello to me down in um, Sally, her and her two boys. Uh, she, In fact, we were at the same stall and she managed to beat me as well to a really nice coral pendant and a bit of Chinese jade. So well done to you there. Um, so went to Sally. Uh, my mom wanted to work Sally yesterday, so I went down with her. It was mainly her stall. Um, I just put one or two bits on the end, and I spent the day down in Sally buying. Needless to say, I'm going to show you everything I bought yesterday in today's video. But this is going to be a very long video. Bought lots, lots and lots and lots and lots. So I am. Um, You'll obviously you'll get to see what I bought and uh, you'll see the research at the end of it. So I, I just well get started. <clears throat> there is absolutely tumps and tumps of it. I'm going to start off with something I've been selling loads of in the shop. And that is brass figures of miners. Now these are all real thick, heavy quality brass. They've all got little bits of coal on them. And to be totally honest with you, I've had a tump of these in. I've been selling them at the shop um, for the big ones with the man and the carts or the horse and carts or whatever. And the winding wheels, I've been getting between 20 and 30 pound a piece. So, here's a nice figure. Daniel, come on there a minute. Say hello to my uh, middle child, guys. You good, say hello? <laughs> He's off to, um, where are you going? Oakwood Park. Oakwood Park today with the school. There's two days left to school and he's off on his school trip. Now Dalla, making sure they, the kids don't just skip the last few days. Right, stop placing these down on the floor there, please. Not anywhere in front of the cabinet in a minute. There's loads of these, so I'm just going to give you a look at them. And then I'm going to place them, give them to Daniel to place down on the um, floor. He's lost his pick. I got it. Yeah, that's his pick. I knew he had one. I had a nice heavy blacksmith. Again, solid brass. Now you know I like my big heavy brass figures. I was gutted because the man had a full collection of these down there on his table. And he had three that must have been two kilos of brass each. And there was another dealer at the stall before me, so I couldn't really say nothing, so I just stood and waited. He left all these behind, and the bloke turned around to him with the other three and said, oh, you can have those for £3, and we both assumed £3 each. He handed him a £20 note, and he gave him £17 change. He had about 14 kilos of brass for three quid. Mmm! And they were nice. They were all the mining ones as well, but they were solid brass. Really nice. Being back over there. I'll give you the price for all this lot in just a minute, guys. It's quite a bit first to get through and show you. Now, I wouldn't be exaggerating and say this is about five to seven kilos of brass. It is seriously heavy. Real good quality. There you go. Two hands. <laughs> Heavy in it. <laughs> Don't drop it. There goes a bit of coal. <laughs> All right. Two the horse was moving. <laughs> pick the coal up. All right. Get the sweeping brush and sweep the coal up for me, love. Please. Hmm. <laughs> in the back room, I think. A flatbed trailer with the miner sat on it. I'll probably chuck a couple of pieces of coal on by there to be honest with you. But uh, yeah, flatbed trailer with the miner and the horse. <coughs> Here's a nice little horse and cart, horse and carriage. Right, babe, tidy now. I don't want to go everywhere. Nice yeah. and slow. Yeah, put that one down. 
Thank you. There's another one. Now these all sell well. We live in a little mining community, a little village of miner, or ex-miners. So this mining stuff flies out the door. I also had a pair of bronze deers, the stag and the doe. They could be brass, but they're certainly bronze finished. They were in the same box. As was this bedpan. Now it's not an old bedpan, uh, so don't go getting excited. I've had some really nice early ones, but this is just a decorative piece. I don't even think this would, was made for use, to be totally honest with you. Although it could have been used, but uh, I don't think it was made. I think this was made as a decorative piece in the last half of the 20th century, to be totally honest with you. But uh, it is what it is. It's going to hang on the wall of a pub or something over here and look really nice. Daniel. So, price. <clears throat> that entire collection, as you just saw it, um, stood me in for £40. It wasn't for nothing. Well, it was for nothing, as far as I'm concerned, but £40. Um, now, when you consider the small miners, I get £10-£15 for. The bigger ones, I'll get £20-£25 each for. That big 7 kilo horse and cart with coal in the back that somebody dropped a little bit of coal um, I'll probably get 50 55 for that so I'm really I did do well but we'll have a look at prices online even though I'm not selling this stuff online this is purely for the shop I already know just looking at that you're talking 25 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 110 20 30 40 50 I'm gonna pull about 200 pound off that 40 pound no questions at all. Tell you that now, 100%. Um, moving on. I had... Right, you'll have to move the carpet, open the door and sweep them out the door, love, all right? A mounted stirrup on this shield with all little bronze features and a fleur-de-lis. It's just different. I think it's purely a decorative item. I think it was made as a decorative item. I don't think this stirrup was ever used. However, it was two quid. I couldn't leave it here two quid. Even if I hang it in the shop as a curiosity and when they say, what is it? I'll say, I don't know. I'll still get 10 or 12 quid for it. So there's a good 10 pound profit on top of my two quid outlay. So, and it does look the part. And we got a lot of pubs around here. So that's all right. <coughs> I feel sorry for this poor sausage. It's a real tortoise and it's been made into some sort of musical instrument with pig skin on the front. Um, it's a bit beaten up, but what I intend to do is I'm going to take this apart. It's no longer going to be an instrument. All this pig skin I'm going to rip off because it's in pretty poor condition and I'm just going to have the tortoise shell and that will go in the cabinet just as a tortoise shell. Now I paid £3 for it. Before everybody starts kicking off about the animals, I don't agree with it but this is already done, it's old. Um, I would much rather it be alive but it is the nature of this job, taxidermy and things, it's part of it. I had a taxidermy spider that I just showed Daniel. What do you think of that? Scary. Scary. It was cool. It's already sold, guys. So I didn't take long to sell. Um, bear with me a second. Wait a second, guys. bought a horn um, the mouthpiece is in one of my boxes here I was gonna put it on for you to see but uh, well, you'll play it. no I can't play it nanny can she was sounding it down in Sully 
beautiful copper and brass horn. Now, the smaller versions, Daniel, come have a look in the box if you can find the, um, the, the mouthpiece for me, please. The smaller versions, the hunting horns, pull far more money than these larger hunting horns or coach horns. Um, however, it is a nice one. Uh, remember I told you about the earlier ones? It'll be in one of them. The earlier ones had a seam. They were seamed, as in, the, the one I showed you the other day was copper and brass, it was 20th century. This is still 20th, but it is seamed. You can see the line running straight up there, or you should do, where they roll the copper and then they seam it. That's the earlier of the horns. Hey, Joy. I want to get the uh, mouthpiece anyway for uh, putting it up for sale today. Hunting, uh, the horn um, was a fiver. Right, moving along swiftly, we have a set of five, unfortunately, not six, solid silver handled knives. Now, basically, I paid a pound a knife. It's worth that for the scrap value of the silver in the handles. Um, I'm not going to mourn about that. The, the dealer at the side of me had them and he didn't know what to sell them for. And he said, are you interested? I said, yeah, but I'd buy him a pound, a pound of knife type of thing. And he said, yeah, go on and have them. So five pound for five solid silver handled knives. I got a couple of pieces here, guys, that I absolutely adore. Bear with me, I will show you in just a second. This is a crack at it, guys. There that. I know it's a spirit kettle. Um, this is an early spirit kettle. Now it comes complete. It's arts and crafts in manner with that almost bamboo finish. Take a look at the back here. I don't know if you can see it. Here it is literally seamed, tongue and groove seamed, or dovetail jointed rather, seamed. So it's a nice early one. It is a signed one. Every single piece is signed Townsend. Enjoy. It might be in my bag with the car then, don't worry. Can you go and check the car for me, Daniel? Make sure there's no traffic warden out there, please. Um, so yeah, beautiful ebony handle. This is simulated bamboo again. It's in lovely condition. It comes with this proper spirit burner. And every single piece is signed. Townsend, this is signed along there. No one made the car. Thank you, babes. Now I paid a tenner for that. I see that anywhere between 50 and 100 pounds for that one absolutely beautiful quality so but i will do the research and see if i can find a similar and what see what they've sold it for but um i wouldn't be letting i go for less than 50 pounds i can tell you that now absolutely love it <coughs> another piece i love um i saw jeremy and simon down in sully again yesterday jeremy stopped to talk to me while we were talking oh by the way hi guys while we were talking, um, I was at the stall and Jeremy points out something that I absolutely loved. And not because of what it is, but because of the look. Absolute stunning. It's not just a box. It is a voltmeter. But look at the colour on the box. It is Stunning. I bought this, I paid £8 for it. Now, I don't know what they're worth, we're going to have a look together, but I can assure you, I just love the look of it as a decorative item. I thought, you know, I'll get £30, £40 for that in the shop just as a decorative item. And to be totally honest with you, the amount of people who tried to buy it off me yesterday was shocking. Daniel, put it on the car. 
Um, loads and loads of people were going to the back of the car, can I buy that, can I buy that? And the answer was no. Um, I don't sell the stuff on the same day I buy it uh, for respect of other dealers anyway. But also because I want to film it for you guys to see and I want to do the research, see what it's worth. Next piece, guys, is one for David. I could really use Andrew on this one. Absolutely beautiful piece. I don't know if you can see how beautiful this is. It's all hand blown and it's mottled. It starts off with a beautiful blue and comes into purple at the top. Really nice. It's a large bowl. It's got to be 12, 14 inches diameter. It is signed on the base. Now, you are not ever going to know, unless you're a specialist, you're never going to know who basically done every single piece or signed every piece. However, if they've signed a piece, they're generally proud of that piece. I'll take a photograph of the signature and I'll add it on at the end. If anybody uh, knows, especially David, <laughs> if anybody knows who made it, I would appreciate it, guys, the help. I haven't done the research on it myself yet to see if I can find it. But it, once this was washed, this is going to be spectacular. I love the combination of the swirls and the blue and the purple coming to the top. That's a real nice quality piece of art glass. And three pound, you know. Next piece, keep eye on the car. Next piece we got, guys, is a bit of Spanish pottery, or Spanish fence, whatever you want to call it. This is a piece by Talavera. Now, Talavera, uh, the early stuff from Mexico and that sells for big bucks. This is a more modern piece from Spain. Still Talavera, still a nice charger. Hand painted. And that was two pound in Sully. Now, what's it worth? When I bought it, I thought 30 to 50. Uh, but we'll see, I'll have a little look online in a bit, but I felt 30 to 50 pound, no problem at all for a charger of that size and quality. And while we're on the subject of chargers, I'll show you another charger that cost me two pounds. And this is 18 inches, Susie Cooper. Doesn't demand the prices it used to, but it certainly demands a lot more than two pound guys. A Susie Cooper charger. All right, it would have been nice if it was a real nice strong Art Deco one, but this floral design is quite a common one with Susie Cooper. Um, stands out a mile, and that is still a very decorative, very large charger. Um, this isn't a small plate, guys. This is a good 18 inches charger, and it was two pound. So we're over the moon with that. There's loads more to go, and then you've got all the jewelry, and then you've got the research, guys. So it's going to be a long video, as I told you. Um, right. A little bit of treen, and it's French. San Reproche de Pose JL. Ellie, La San Reproche. Can't even read it tidy. Um, I don't know if you can see it because of the lighting in this shop isn't brilliant. Again, I'll take a photograph of that for you. This is something to do with wine related. It'll be for coke in your bottles or something like that. And it's a really nice piece of treen. And again, if I had a bit of woodworm, which is long gone, it is dead, might I add. Nothing coming out of it. Um, but it was two pound. A nice, interesting, no, it wasn't, it was a pound. It was a nice, interesting, quirky bit of treen that I do absolutely love. And it's a bit of wine collectibles. Next, guys, moving on. I'm not going to pull them all out. But um, just give you a little look. I got a set in the. There's a set of these, and they are Edinburgh Crystal. Go to look up the pattern, and they were a pound of glass. Fully signed Edinburgh on the base. Right at 12 o'clock there. You keep an eye on the time, love. Um, beautiful, all in good condition. And for a pound of glass, 
they they could be one of my biggest scores on the day edinburgh crystal they should pull decent money i'll find the pattern out for you moving on and a beautiful decorative log basket probably 1930s 50s somewhere on there uh, lovely little lion masks on the side copper studs holding everything together lovely patina on the inside I don't know if you can see it again because of the bloody light and a bit of patina on the underneath but what a beautiful large log basket for a tenner I think I'll put 45 on that chucker in the window I think I'll sell pretty fast it's absolutely gorgeous it's got lion paw feet Really nice little bit of decorative brass. We still do like the brass over here, guys. We, we still do all right with brass. Uh, keep it with me. What else have we got in here? Ooh. I had a Georgian or late Georgian, early Victorian celery vase. It's 19th century, it's hand blown with this molding, vertical molding coming down here. Beautiful, beautiful piece. I'd say it's about 1830, 1840 in date. Um, it's just stunning. I paid a fiver for that. It was off trade. He knew it was an old celery vase, but that's about all he knew. That's a really nice Georgian or early Victorian celery vase. And for a fiver, I'm happy there. As you can see, the quality of the stuff that they've come out of Sully has been really, really good. I've had another egg coddler guys all of a sudden I'm looking for egg coddlers and out they come this one is Royal Worcester and it has um, a fruit design painted on it so again I have no idea of the pattern but I will find the pattern now when we have a look and if you haven't seen all my other videos you'll be shocked to hell to see how much these are pulling now really I shouldn't be telling you because I'm just making my own competition but hey ho Bought this off a uh, dealer who had loads of them who cleared out the Waterford shop. So I'm going to start putting that when uh, I have my Waterford. I'll put the Waterford sign up and say, this is Waterford Crystal. Yay. So I can actually show people this Waterford. And I'll have a shelf then just for Waterford. And this will be there saying, Waterford Crystal. Happy days. That was three quid. I couldn't leave it there. Could I a little Waterford display for three quid? Uh, anything else? Right, I got a couple of pictures. These are absolutely stunning. They're probably not going to be for resale. There's the first. And I don't know if you can see it. Here is the Puthcall Pier and the waves crashing over the uh, sea. I'll add a photograph in at the end because you'll probably see a better on a photograph, guys. And then here's another. On the calm day. Which again, you've got the pier, which is exactly what we had there, but you had the waves crashing over it. You've got the lighthouse on top and the sea and everything. Now, I bought these. I paid a fiver for the two. And I bought them purely on nostalgia. My entire youth um, was spent growing up in Pothcall. My parents used to have a caravan down there. And we'd go down there every weekend. And I'd be fishing on this pier. I spent, I spent more hours on that pier than I spent in my own bed, let me tell you. I have fished off that thousands and thousands of hours so i bought them purely off nostalgia because i loved them and they're gonna go into my home and probably well i'd say into my office but it's no longer my office guys and i'll talk to you about that later uh moving on we have <sighs> stinking dirty just ignore the how dirty it is there's another pub advertising mirror for Budweiser, King of Beers, brewery by our original, hang on, brewed by our original all natural hops and rice and best, oh, whatever. <laughs> anyway, it's all written on and all got all the uh, logos on for the Budweiser and that. Um, and that mirror was a pound. It's stinking dirty. But I assure you, I will clean that, give it a wash, and you know, it's going to be 20 quid all day long. 
Is there anything else I've got yet to show you? I don't think there is. I got a lot of jewellery to film now. Um, and I got to find the mouthpiece for this trumpet or the horn. Um, I think that's about it, guys, bar the jewellery. As you can see, already been an absolutely exceptional day. I'm going to make a fortune off yesterday. Um, but I'll cut in there now. i got to take Daniel over to school so we can go on his school trip. Are you excited? And that's his excitement. You can see where he gets it from, can't you? Um, so I'll finish off the filming uh, when I get back of the jewellery and that. Pack all this away and then I shall do the, um, the research part of the video for you. So, I'll see you soon, guys. Do you want to say goodbye to him, Tidy, now? Bye. That's Daniel, guys. Bye for now. See you soon. Okay guys, um, with that art glass bowl, with a little help from a friend who came in the shop, I found out who it is. And it is Jeff Walker and Robin Smith of Melting Pot Glassworks. And as you can see, I've already listed it here. This is my bowl at £55 on eBay. Um, there are some other pieces on there for reasonable money. But not a lot of his stuff on uh, online. Um, you can buy it on private websites and things, but that's where I've pitched the uh, bowl at. So fingers crossed, us uh, will sell that. Moving on, then um, I looked for the Budweiser mirror, and believe it or not, look as much as I could, my mirror isn't on yet. But I'm showing you just some of the prices that some of these mirrors can pull, the Budweiser advertising mirrors. Mine's not going to be nothing like this. Mine's going to be about 25 quid, 30 quid. But uh, just giving you an idea, some of them can pull decent money. Especially if they're vintage. Yeah, I'm not going to keep going through them all. There's pages and pages. <coughs> about three pages of uh, Budweiser pub mirrors some brand new some old um, but as I said mine's not on there but I'll be about 20 quid 30 quid for mine then I want to move on and show you Talavera now there's two types you got Mexican Talavera and Spanish Talavera uh, what I'm showing you here is some Mexican Talavera and look at the prices on this stuff Some of this is from Spanish as well. There's a Spanish uh, charger there, twelve hundred, well, eleven hundred and twenty-six pounds. Um, Mexican, but there for the bars, Talavera, nine hundred fourteen pounds. Obviously, these are the older pieces. What I've had is a uh, second half of the twentieth century piece. They even got a bloody toilet. <laughs> but basically, it's like a tin glazed earthenware. Or my Olica. Um If I come across now, I'm going to show you some sold, sold prices. No, asking prices rather. This is Spanish Talavera. Best asking prices out there. Just to give you an idea, if it's got some age, even the Talavera put, can pull good money. But not as good as the uh, the Mexican one. Now, hang on. There we go. Is it? No. This is the sold prices on the Spanish uh, Talavera, but this is brand new. If you look at it, new. £45 for a few plates and £37 for a jug. That's the only uh, couple of pieces on there that I could find that were uh, any resemblance at all. But there's a name for you to watch, guys. Talavera. If you don't know it, do some reading on it. Now, I've looked into the Susie Cooper. There's none of my patterns sold. And there's only this being asked. Two little plates, but they're for eighteen pound on my pattern. That's it, but they very large charger. I've got him up in the shop already. I've put thirty-five on mine. For the two pound, that was a good buy. Then we have the little French wooden corker, bottle corker. Now these are asking prices online: twenty-two pounds, ninety-five, fifty. 
22, 26, 32, and so on, 37. So for the money I paid for it, it was all right. Sold prices is one sold at 20 quid. And then you come down, depending on how good they are. There's like that one there, that's a stunner. Moving along then, i done the research on my Edinburgh Crystal and it is Le Monde pattern. Uh, set of tumblers but there for 60 quid, 60 quid for tumblers again. Um, two champagne glasses, 35. Five whiskey tumblers, 30 quid. And so forth. Uh, set the six wine glasses, twenty-five pound, twenty-four pound. So not spectacular. However, they're all right. They'll still sell. Then there's the exact log bucket I've got up for sale at forty-eight pounds. It is none sold. Um, there it is up there on top. Hi. Uh, so there's none. Oh, bear with me. There's none sold. This is the only one up being offered, and they want forty-eight pound for that. I have, however, got a page yet to show you some of the prices on some of them. Just give you an idea. Some of these log baskets still go for decent money. leave it but there I ain't gonna show you everything then is the celery vase that is my particular celery vase and it is a pillar molded celery vase Lake Georgian I put mine up for 45 um, there's a few variations of them some people are asking 175 pound for a pillar molded celery vase which is a lot of money on eBay Celery vases, hang on, bear with me. I know I did see a couple here that should have fitted in the uh, description with myself. Bear with me. That gives you an idea anyway on celery vase prices. Uh, right, there's one with a slightly writhen top. Same pillar moulding, they sold it for 50. There's another but there, very similar to mine, slightly different top, the pillar molding, 49. I won't keep going into it, but you can see the money on them, even for a celery vase. Obviously the Royal Worcester Egg Coddlers, I'm not gonna find the pattern I've got. This is just for people who haven't seen my recent videos. Just give you an idea. One, one egg coddler but there, 100 pound. This is why I buy the egg coddlers now, guys, I've started. 73.99 don't ask me which ones sell yet which ones don't i'm just picking them all up when i see them i buy them it's that simple all right just just a heads up for you they do sell now guys moving along you saw i had a huge box of brassware these are the types of figures they sell for 35 pound with the winding wheel 45 just a little minor 23 couple of minors for there 30 22 25 20 quid for him I've got him over in the cabinet already but there these are the type of things I bought 18 pound for that type and 16 pound for there 14 pound for the little ones he's missing all the coal everything and in a mess but you can see the types of monies I'm going to get for that little box full there. The horse and cart, they don't pull as much online as uh, I can get in the shop, believe it or not. There's a similarish one there, £35 online. There's a couple around that price, 34s and 37s, there's a few around that price. It's not just one. Um, but I've got, I think it's 45 or 50 on mine. Then we come to the coach horn. Um, now I told you the coach horns don't pull as much as the hunting horn. £30 there is the top price. Coming down 35 22 25 down to a tenner. Let me show you the difference on hunting horns. 200 
180, 255, 170, 170, 155. You get the hint. The small horns pull more money. This was the only spirit cat I could find, and they sold in £95. Now, it's Town's End, same as mine. There we go, Town's End. Um, I don't rate that one any better than mine. Now, I'm expecting to take an offer on mine, but I've put it on for 125 for now, and see what offers I get. I can always lower it down a bit if later on, if need be. But it's a beautiful quality piece. And there's a little one by there, Arts and Crafts, almost in the Benson Manor, £115, Town's End again. So, if you want to do anything over £75, I'll take the offer. And finally, the voltmeters. Have a look at the prices on these antique voltmeters, guys. The one I got isn't on yet. However, it's beautifully boxed, looks the part. Um... And it's going to end up going on eBay this weekend. On my house. You like it, yeah? Yeah. But that gives you an idea, guys, of the voltmeters. <laughs> Say hello to Happy. I haven't I'm, seen her for I'm a while. Here. I know. Yeah, I'm, here. I'm here with Mama Raj. Oh, he's put me on the spot now. I haven't been a while. Look, I'm a bit shy. I've called Target, guys. Full stone, £4 off. I'm done, and I've been smoke-free for nearly two years. Well done. So, I'm finally there. But that's why I haven't been there. I've been quite busy. I've been at the gym, and of course, I've got family commitments as well. They're more important than me. Of course my family's more important. Why wouldn't <gasps> we be here? Right. Anyway, guys. <laughs> a little glimpse at the shop view. I've changed everything around. All the jewellery's gone out a year. I'll give you a video in the week. Show you all that. But for anybody who haven't seen my shop, it's quite a beautiful little thing, but it is small. I bought a cabinet too, guys. I've got a glass cabinet for my living room. I'm really, really pleased with that. I paid £30 for it. And it's going in the living room with glass shelves. And this little um, wonder of you tried to steal it off me for the shop. Nope, don't know what you're talking about. He tried to say, well, he has got a little bit of room that he can fit it in, and it is a nice little cabinet, but he wanted it, and I've said, no, put my foot down. It's for my living room. Anyway. I'm going to put myself in the iron with a pan. I'm finishing the video off. Should I, do you want to say bye-bye? Bye. They actually see me nearly put myself in the iron with a pan. Okay, guys, welcome to uh, part two of this video. It's um, the jewellery section. And as you can see, I picked up a little bit of jewellery in um, Sully on Sunday. Uh, some, some things appeal to me more than others, but there is, either way, a really nice job lot. So we'll start off with the, uh, the rings. And if I come here, we have a 9 karat gold cubic zirconia ring. Unfortunately, it's not diamonds, but there you go. Uh, full set of hallmarks inside. I've had a few of these in lately where these have been diamonds, but it's still a pretty dress ring. Now, I give £10 for this one, um, but that's okay. I didn't mind that. £10 for a nice gold ring, absolutely fine. This one here, I was at the stall, and the lady said to me, oh, it's not real. Well, I said to actually someone else, it's not real, and uh, they put it down, and I picked it up. Oh, there with me. Sorry guys, let me do it again, and there's a full set of hallmarks in there guys, unfortunately I thought it might have been gold but it's uh, yellow silver or gold on silver, but it is, it's not 925 or anything, there's a full set of Birmingham hallmarks in there, I haven't dated it yet but uh, it's going to be a vintage ring and it is beautiful. That was 50p. What more can you say to that for 50 pence, guys? Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful. Moving on, and this really nice elephant uh, pendant in silver. Don't know exactly how it works. I think you just hang it through the trunk and you dangle him down like so. 
This is the lady I missed the um, jade and the coral off. I had most of this, guys. Um, these here are Bakelite. So you got a pair of vintage Bakelite um, clip-on earrings. They were 50p. This is nice. I'm not 100%. I think that's a bit of Chinese porcelain in there. Early Chinese porcelain, or what they call a shard, and it's mounted in sterling silver. That is beautiful pendant. And again, um, well, the group I'll show you now cost me um, fifteen pound, which was quite a bit. But um, this was part of that. As was this jade elephant with gold mounts. A little bit of Chinese jade. So you got Chinese porcelain, Chinese jade. I missed the other jade and the coral off the lady, as I've already told you. Had this silver ring. Um, it is all stamped. Everything is stamped, guys. I can't see where it is a second on the video. But yeah, there it is. Right by there, I think. But uh, yeah, everything is stamped on you. Um, we had another silver necklace. No, this one is nothing special. It'll just go out on my uh, £10 rail at the front of the shop. It's pleasant enough. We had a pair of earrings. This bracelet is lush and huge. It's not an ankle bracelet, I have checked, but it's a big bracelet. It's a good nine inches, I think. And it's really heavy quality silver, thick heavy silver, fully hallmarked. There you go, you can see it just on the clasp there. I have this here, which we thought it may have been an ankle bracelet, or it's more a child's necklace. Um, silver ring here, guys. Beautiful little pink stone with CZs. I've had a few of these over the well, over the months. Uh, you can see the stamp just inside there. So that's a uh, really pleasant ring. So that little job lot there owes me fifteen pounds. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that I'm going to do well on that. Here we have a beautiful, um, I think it's turquoise to be totally honest with you, in silver. Um, is this in the jewellers? No. I thought you might have had the jeweller's name. Really nice quality. Fully stamped on the back. It's a really nice, I think that's the um, Eternity Knot. Where, oh, figure of eight eternity loop so that was quite nice um, I've had this pair of silver earrings they were a pound and I had a silver necklace there which was a pound I don't know if I told you sorry that one was two pounds so all in all this is the jewelry section and when you compare this to the actual antique section I bought Sunday in Sully you can see just how good the day actually was. Um, this will all go out now. And, well, what can I say? <clears throat> Over the moment. Some beautiful, beautiful pieces. What more can I say, guys? Um, <laughs> you've seen how much antique-wise brass, mining stuff, I bought on Sunday. Um, the jewellery section, again, brilliant if i could buy like that every day i went out and between the buying and what's coming in the shop i got more stock than i can handle at the moment i got bags full of jewelry absolutely everywhere but i'm hoarding it up ready for christmas guys i can't wait you know october november december i'm gonna fly the jewelry out here like i did last year because last year i ran out because i couldn't get into my safe um so all in all it was an absolute storm of a day again Selling for me wasn't so hot, but I didn't have a stall. My mother had a stall and I just had a couple of pieces on the end with some coins and that just to try and, you know, 
keep me busy while um, I was sat there bored. Because I went there, um, I spent most of the day walking around, but I had to spend a bit of time with my mum and give her a hand. I had to help my unload in the car and things. Um, <coughs> so, yeah. I took a few pieces down. I didn't sell great. I pulled a little bit of the money back I spent, but who cares? I bought really, really well, and I bought some beautiful stuff. And to be totally honest with you, when you can buy an antique ring like that for 50 pounds, that is why we go to car boot sales. Every single one of us. Now, before I finish off, I mentioned halfway through the video that I no longer had an office. Uh, now, those of you who follow my channel know I've got massive, massive office with all my books on the one wall and all my stock and a photographing studio. Well, <laughs> I've got a very large four bedroom uh, Victorian house. Um, however, it now needs to be a five bedroom uh, house. We are expecting another child. I'll add in a, a copy of the scan just so you can see. So basically, uh, myself and my girlfriend are going to move into the office as a downstairs bedroom so the children can all have the upstairs rooms, the four bedrooms upstairs. And we're going to move into the uh, downstairs bedroom. Um, so, yeah. It's going to be 19 years difference between my oldest and my youngest. And we'd, we'd now expect, well, I'm now expecting my fifth child. <laughs> but it's all good. So... I'll splice in the scan and um, we are going to have a 4D scan done. Um, that'll be in about 8 weeks, 8 to 10 weeks, something like that. Um, as will the 20 week scan which is going to be in another 5 weeks. So obviously you'll get to see all those updates. I'll put all those in as normal. Um, so yeah, I sacrificed my office. So I'm going to fortify my garage. Uh, with shutter doors and things and I'm gonna store a little bit of the you know the ceramics and glass and things out in the garage um, Jewelry will still stay in the safe But um, I'll free up the office and turn that into a downstairs bedroom over the coming months Happy days <laughs> Anyway guys, I'm gonna leave it there. I will remember to splice in the photograph of the baby for you guys I hope you've enjoyed the video. There's some really nice stock, some really nice jewellery, and to top it all off, you get to see the scan. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. You'll find me on Facebook. I have a page and a group, Antiques Arena. You'll find me on eBay. I have a page, Antiques Arena Clearance. You'll find me on my own website, antiquesarena.co.uk and antiquesarena.com. Or, uh, like so many of you do, if you're fortunate to live local or within driving distance, you can come to the shop. It's Antiques Arena, 78 Oxford Street, Mountain Ash, Charlie Fox Road, 45, 3 Hotel, uh, 3 Hotel Bravo, yes. Got confused then. I keep saying my home address. <laughs> Just for those of you who haven't seen my shop yet, I do videos regular to show um, the shelves and the stock changing and things like that. Uh, but there's two rooms, there's another room eh, out there. So, yep. Yeah. If you want to come to the shop, you feel free to come and visit. Other than that, guys, bye for now.